This is the diaphragm. Uh, on the inferior surface of the diaphragm, this is the fascia, extraperitoneal fascia, diaphragmatic fascia here. And you can see through it the vessels, the branches of what? What are these? Uh, this is the other branches of the inferior phrenic artery. These are the core of the diaphragm here. And you can see on the right side of the lid line is the inferior vena cava. This is the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava, not all of the inferior vena cava is shown. Part of it has been removed, has been cut, because the liver was removed. And the liver has a groove. And this groove is uh, uh, made by the inferior vena cava. It has a course inside the liver, and it is at this point that it receives the hepatic veins. Also, the inferior vena cava receives the renal veins, you can see here. And at the hilum of the kidney, the renal vein is the most anterior structure, as you see. The, the renal vein is most anterior. Here is the kidney. The upper pole of the kidney, of the right kidney, is, re is related to the suprarenal gland. This is the pyramidal shape of the suprarenal gland. Both the suprarenal gland and the kidney are encased within the same fascia, but there is a septum here that separates the uh, suprarenal from the kidney. Okay. Here the kidney has been incised along the lateral border, along the line of Brodel, the, the, the uh, bloodless line of Brodel, and you can see now the inside of the kidney, the longitudinal section in the kidney. You can see the cortex here, the pyramids of the medulla. These are the pyramids. And here is the pelvis of the kidney. Of course, this is the region of the sinus. It contains the pelvis, major calyx, major calyx. These are two major calyces, and they they are formed by the union of minor calyces. So this is a minor calyx. This is another minor calyx here. And in addition, you can see the branches of the vessels and the tributaries of the veins are all present here. The branches of the segmental arteries. So these are the interlobar and then they will give rise to the inter uh, arcuate and interlobular arteries, which we cannot see clearly in the gross section. This is a segmental branch. See? And a segmental branch, once it goes in, into the side of the pyramid, it will form an interlobar. Uh, you can see that some of the fat, although most of the fat has been removed, that surrounds the kidney. We will see more of this fat on the other specimen. But this is the fat, that the perinephric fat, that surrounds the kidney and is important for keeping it in its uh, position. Now we are going to see the structures behind the kidney. Okay. Now. So behind the kidney, of course, this is the urethra here. Okay. Behind the kidney, uh, the upper, po uh, upper pole of the kidney is related to the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm here. The lower part of the kidney is related to, to three muscles. Psoas major, quadratus lumborum, and the transverse abdominus muscle. This is the transverse beginning of the transverse abdominus muscle here. These are the transverse fibers of the transverse abdominus muscle. The nerves. We have the subcostal nerve, this one. That is the 12th rib. I can feel it. Okay, And this is the subcostal nerve. And then this is the iliohypogastric. And it's called lateral branch, the ilioinguinum. Okay? It is, both of them are derived from L1. The subcostal is from T12. The subcostal, iliohypogastric, and ilioinguinal nerves. This is the medial arcuate ligament. And then the lateral arcuate ligament. The lateral arcuate is thickening of the fascia over quadratus lumborum. Mm -hmm. And the medial arcuate is the thickening of the fascia over psoas major muscle. Both these ligaments, they provide origin for the diaphragm. We are on the left side. This is the, this is the spleen. This is the spleen, just below the diaphragm. So it is the spleen here. That is the spleen. And at the hilum of the spleen, you can see the, the tail of the pancreas. 
That is the tail of the pancreas. Okay? The tail of the pancreas is also related to the kidney. And here is the kidney, the posterior. This is the fascia. This is the fascia around the kidney. This is the renal fascia here. This is the renal fascia. And the fat here is the perinephric fat. This is the fascia, the perinephric fat, and the glistening structure is the renal capsule. Okay? And you can see again, this is the pelvis of the kidney, which is located most posterior, and it narrows down inferiorly into the ureter. So that is the ureter. Pelvis and the ureter. The pelvis is the most posterior structure at the renal, uh, uh, at, the, at the hilum of the kidney. Doctor, the relation with the uh, It is a retroperitoneal structure. Now, That's the small intestine and the, the colon are all related to the anterior surface of the left kidney. But here they have been removed, as you see. Now, here, I'll try to re remove uh, and reflect the uh, gut away to see the posterior abdominal wall. And here is the, this is the abdominal aorta, the site of the bifurcation of the abdominal aorta. Before the, the, this is at the level of L4. Proximal to that, at this level, we have an artery arising from the anterior aspect of the aorta. So what is this? Artery? This is the inferior mesenteric artery. Okay? Now, where is the kidney? It is a retroperitoneal structure. This is the fascia here, uh, and you can see now the glistening capsule. capsule of the kidney. This is the kidney, and this is the fascia and the fat, and you can see a lot of fat here behind the kidney, paranephric. Uh, this is the pelvis giving rise to the ureter. You can see the ureter descends vertically down across the obliquity of the psoas major. That is the psoas major muscle, psoas major. And here is the muscle lateral to it is the quadratus lumborum. So psoas major and quadratus lumborum muscle. The quadratus lumborum is attached to the iliac crest. Now I can feel the iliac crest here. And this is the muscle that is attached to the iliac crest. It is the quadratus lumborum muscle. Psoas major muscle in this specimen has an additional tendon related to it. You can see it here. This tendon belongs to? This is the psoas minor. Not always present. The psoas minor is not always present, like the other muscles I mentioned, starting with the letter P. Palmaris longus, plantaris, psoas minor, and? You mean major? Minor. And pyramidalis. Yes. And in front of the psoas major muscle, I can see a nerve. Which nerve is this one? The nerve that passes in front of psoas major muscle. Genital femoral nerve. This is the genital femoral nerve. It's a branch of the lumbar plexus. It arises from the lumbar plexus as it forms inside the psoas major and arises from the anterior aspect of the psoas major muscle. Uh, crossed by the ureter, and you can see now the ureter is crossed by so many other structures. We have to find what are these other structures here, particularly on the left side. It is crossed by these vessels, and these are the gonadal vessels. Mm -hmm. We will talk about these vessels later on. Here it is the ovarian, artery and vein. Okay? Ovarian? Yeah, this is a female okay. subject. Okay? And uh, then we have these vessels. This is the, uh, you mentioned, that is the inferior mesenteric mm. artery. The inferior mesenteric artery give rise to the left colic. Mm -hmm. The left colic has an ascending branch. Mm. This is the ascending branch of the left colic. Mm. And the ascending branch of the left colic is accompanied by a vein. What is this vein? That is the inferior mesenteric vein. Both the ascending branch and the vein, they will rise a fold mm. close to the duodenum, paraduodenal fold. So these are the vessels that are related to the front of the 
ureter. The ureter, as you can see, it enters into the pelvis. This is the abdominal part of the ureter, but then it enters into the pelvis. It crosses in front of the uh, uh, common iliac artery. See, this is the ureter again. It crosses, in fact, in front of its bifurcation. It is at this point where the ureter crosses the artery that it will get a little bit kinked and narrowed, where that's why stones might get impacted at this point. It's in one of the sites of the normal structures of the ureter together with the pelvic ureteric junction and the uh, wall of the urinary bladder. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.